ओके गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स लेट्स बिगिन तो बिफोर स्टार्टिंग लेट मी नो वेदर माय वॉइस इज ऑडिबल टू एवरीवन ओके सो लेट्स बिगिन दैट यस्टरडे वी पीपल हैव डन विथ टेंसेस एंड वी हैव डिस्कस्ड एक्सरसाइज आल्सो एंड इन टुडेज लेक्चर वी पीपल विल गो फॉर एडवर्ब्स so in parts of speech we people have done with uh, noun pronoun then we have done with adjective verb and now people will going to learn adverb so let's begin okay so uh, is my screen visible to everyone are you able to see adverbs on your screen ha fine good so uh, let's begin first of all we people have studied verb and uh, if you are very clear about what verb is verb is a word which shows action so there we come to know that some verbs they are just transitive verbs some verbs they are intransitive verbs and also we people have talked about the uh, their three forms and also the way in which verb is used also auxiliary verbs and modal auxiliary verbs primary auxiliaries all these we have discussed in previous lectures but right now we people have to think about adverbs so adverbs are related to verbs and that's why we people have to uh, understand relationship between verb and adverb so in the verb adverb there is verb also so adverb is a word which describes verb in simple words i will tell what adverb is so adverb is a word which describes verb so as we have discussed about adjective adjective is a verb which describes noun in similar way we people can call adverb is a word which describes verb so let's see first of all definition of adverb so adverb is a word that modifies so modified means here the way we people make change in the meaning of that particular word and that is modify so how that word modifies modifies the meaning of a verb so might be the meaning could be changed or it is additional meaning so we people can call it describing so a word which describes a verb or not only verb it can also modify an adjective also so it modifies verb adjective and it also modifies another verb also and that word is called an adverb तो आडवर्ब मुझे क्या असना है कि ऐसा एखाद शब्द कि जो दुसर क्रियापदाबल अधिक महती संगत है कि एडजेक्टिव बदल अधिक महति संगत है और विथ अनादर एडवर्ब इट इज गोइंग टू टेल अस एडिशनल मीनिंग एंड दैट वर्ड विल बी एडवर्ब ओके सो दैट इज एडवर्ब इफ यू नो लेट सी एग्जाम्पल हियर देन वी विल कम टू नो मोर अबाउट एडवर्ब सो फर्स्ट एग्जाम्पल विच इज मेन्शनड हियर इट इज दैट he strokes the horse gently so the gently is a word in this sentence which is adverb so why it is adverb because it is telling or it is modifying the verb which is verb in this sentence strokes is the verb in this sentence and that's why if we ask a question how does he stroke the horse then we people will get answer gently strokes so gently tells the manner or method in which he strokes the horse so the meaning of stroke means thapatne kiwa thap marne likewise and gently means in a gentle manner okay so from that example we'll come to know gently is adverb here then see second example mentioned here the strawberries were very sweet okay before going uh this example we people have to just check that the word very and sweet the relationship between very and sweet 
so sweet is not verb here verb is where but very that is modifying the adjective sweet sweet is adjective and that's why very tells additional or extra meaning of about sweet and that's why we come to know these are the strawberries which are very sweet so very modifies the sweet which is adjective so we are we have discussed in definition it modifies the meaning of verb it modifies the meaning of adjective or another verb and that's why sweet is adjective to which very modifies uh, let's see if anyone is waiting okay i think no one is waiting let it be good fine next one more example is here bolt runs quickly so number 3 example is bolt runs quickly so here we will come to know that bolt it is the name of the player you might have listened about usain bolt he is from jamaica and he is a fast runner which has uh, held the record of running so that bolt and he runs but now we will come to know how does he run he runs quickly so here quickly is the word which modifies the verb run and that's why here quickly is adverb so from these three examples we will come to know that gently very quickly these are adverbs which are modifying respectively uh, strokes or sweet or runs so is it clear to everyone what adverb is and how does it function if it is clear then we'll talk about its classification its types so based on the the function they do in a sentence these adverbs they are classified into different types so adverbs can be classified into the following categories based on their meaning and uh, it is possible that sometimes one adverb may be categorized between two types maybe one uh, adverb will come in adverb of time also and adverb of place also depending upon how and where they are used so their context decides whether they are in adverbs of time or place or manner so uh, now let's go to the second slide to see that uh, types of adverbs so first of all first type it is adverb of time so why it is called adverb of time because they refer to the words which are denoting time and that's why they are called adverbs of time and they answer the question of when if you ask question by when to the verb then the whatever answer you people get and that answer will be adverb of time means for example you people can call now then ago before after or earlier late these are the words which are related to time and if we use them in sentences then they modify the verb and that's why they are called adverbs of time so other examples also we can call today tomorrow yesterday these are also referring to the time and they are also examples of adverbs of time so here one example is given that i have heard that song before so if you come to know about the word which is last that is before so before is the word which modifies to the verb that heard when did i heard this song kadhi aikle mi tigana i heard it before so before is referring to time and that's why before is called here adverb of time okay is it clear getting if it is clear then we will talk about the second example second example is edward is always late for his class so here you can easily find out the word late which is related to time and in this sentence it functions as adverb of time so the words like before or late they are called 
adverbs of time okay so uh, from this two examples you will come to know how people can refer to time and that particular word is describing to the verb or an adjective or another adverb then we call them adverbs of time okay is it clear adverbs of time any difficulty okay uh, so then we will go for second type and second type is adverbs of frequency so adverbs of frequency it talks about that how many times an action takes place maybe once twice thrice or we can call again we can call seldom rare frequently that shows the repetition of that action and that's why they are called adverbs of frequency and if you ask the question how often a particular action takes place then the answer we people will get it will be adverbs of frequency so for example we people can have example here the policeman warned twice before shooting so the word twice it tells us about the policeman warn two times and that's why it is twice so just i told you people once twice thrice or frequently again and again or seldom rarely these are the words they talk about the frequency of the action and that's why they are adverbs of frequency okay so then uh, here one more example is there that barking dogs seldom bite so the word seldom it is adverb of frequency seldom it means kochit rarely not very frequently that is seldom okay so we have done with types two types here adverbs of time which talk about the uh, time when that particular action takes place and adverbs of frequency it talks about how many times that particular action takes place okay if it is clear then uh, let's go to next type which talks about the adverbs of places so adverbs of places they refer to the place and if we ask the question by where then the answer we will get it will be adverbs of place for example we can uh, tell some examples like here there everywhere somewhere nowhere these are referring to the places or he, here there away near below under these are also examples of adverbs of places so adverbs of places show where the action is to be performed or described so uh, let's see examples here first example the murder took place here so here it refers to place it tells about the place where the action takes place kriya kote ghadli hai ya jage cha sandarbha madhe aplyala mahiti here mule milte and that's why here it is called adverb of place okay then second example is rose left her family and went away so where did she go she went away so away is also referring to the any particular a uh, place that describes here that where that action takes place and that's why where she go she went away so away is also adverb of place and that's why these type of words they are called adverbs of place so where you people have to remember the question which uh, answers the word where that will be adverbs of place so in terms of adverbs of time when adverbs of frequency how many times adverbs of place where and then the next type that is adverbs of manner so we are going to see about the next type and next type it is about adverbs of manner okay so is it clear are you getting my voice or it is only i am just speaking is it audible to everyone okay so now pay attention on type number 4 and that is adverbs of manner 
and adverbs of manner they describe the method or manner in which particular action takes place ekadi kriya hi kashi ghadte he adverbs of manner cha mule lakshat yet asto so let's see here they show how or in what manner the verb is used so here you will come to know that all the adjectives which end in ly suffix then they will become adverbs of manner for example happy happy is an adjective but if we add ly suffix to happy then it will become happily and the word happily it is adverb of manner so likewise you people can uh, frame so many examples of adverbs of manner by adding ly suffix to any adjective another example i will tell easy easy is adjective and if we just add ly suffix to easy then it will become easily and the word easily it becomes adverbs of manner or another example slow slow is adjective and if you add ly to slow then it will become slowly and slowly is adverb of manner for example sentence we can make the elephant walks slowly so slowly here adverbs of manner so here one example is given he works diligently so diligently it is the method or manner in which he works so he works very carefully he is taking efforts on his work and that's why we can call he works diligently so diligent it is adjective and if we added ly to it then it becomes adverb of manner in second example the soldiers fought fiercely so here the word fiercely it is also adverb of manner because it tells the way in which soldiers fought how did soldier fight soldier fight fiercely fiercely in a severe way tivratena nikrane ladle soldiers so that fiercely it is adverb of manner okay so here we have done with this adverb of manner also so four types we have done adverbs of time adverbs of frequency adverbs of place adverbs of manner and then let's go to the c next type which is adverbs of degree or we can call it quantity also so degree or quantity they refer to extent they refer to proportion they refer to the amount and that's why they are called adverbs of degree or quantity and these adverbs of degree or quantity they show how much or the degree or extent of which the verb is used kiti pramanamade vaparlela hai ne thoda jasta khup kami that is proportion that is extent and that way we people have to just identify how we people can use adverbs of degree so here we people will have examples less more much many these are examples of adverbs of quantity or degree here one example mentioned and it is he was too careless so the word too kiti careless hai to is too careless so that two word it talks about the extent in which he is careless too talks about the degree that he was careless so two is adverb of degree or second example here he couldn't be more precise the word more it talks about that how much precise he could be kiti yogya asu shakto to ta kiti asu shakat nahi tar hyacha peksha jasto asu shakat nahi so more that talks about the extent and that's why it is adverb of degree or we can call it quantity also okay so we have done with adverbs of degree also then let's go to see the next type and that is adverbs of affirmation and negation so before going in detail you people just try to understand what is affirmation and what is negation so the affirmation it means the word which is used in a positive way jala apan hokararthi asa manu affirmative sentences that the sentences are without not or no and 
negation it means the sentences with negative or not or no so some words like never nobody so these are words with negation so affirmation ho karati negation na karati so some words they are adverbs which are used in affirmation and some adverbs they are used for negative meaning that time they are called adverbs of affirmation and adverbs of negation okay so example here i am certain that he is the killer so in this sentence the word certain it is adverb and it is affirmative adverb so affirmative means in this sentence there is no not negation nahi hai nakararti nahi hai ho kararti hai certain it gives the assurance and that's why it is adverb of affirmation in second example you people will find that i am not sure how long it will take to reach so the word not sure here sure it is adverb but here before sure we people have used not and that's why it is called adverb of negation why negation because of not then we people will go to see the seventh type and this seventh type it is adverbs of reason it is going to talk about why or cause of that particular uh, action why it takes place karan sangitla janar hai okay so uh, let's say example he was therefore expelled from school so therefore it tells the reason manun so why he was expelled because he might have done some mistake some blunder some misbehavior and that's why he was expelled from school and in this sentence therefore it tells the reason of expelling from school so therefore it is adverb of reason in this sentence okay then second example second example is hence so hence it is also used as adverb of reason his efforts were hence futile so meaning of futile it means that they are of no use useless so whatever efforts he has done whatever work he has done that work it is of no use and that's why his efforts were hence futile so hence tells that he has taken efforts but his efforts were not in appropriate direction or he has not followed appropriate methodology and that's why that is the reason that his efforts were futile so hence it is adverb of reason okay so i think that we have done with here types so seven types we have uh, just discussed and if still you people are not clear with any of type then you people may ask me immediately or afterwards also if not then we are going to uh, close here this adverbs so let me know whether you people have any doubt or you are just getting my voice and it is clear to you okay if it is clear then one more topic today we will discuss and that topic it is preposition so that is also one of the important part of speech preposition that comes with nouns or pronouns also normally but sometimes they may confuse us sometimes there are prepositions which are compound prepositions sometimes prepositions have more than one meaning or they are used for more than one context maybe sometimes one preposition is used for preposition uh, or referring to time and the same preposition can be used to refer preposition of place also for example in so if i say in it refers to place also if i say in the room so room is a space or place and if i say in the november so both example where preposition in is used but in one case it is place and in other case it is time 
so to avoid these confusion we people will see that prepositions how to use prepositions carefully at appropriate context without making mistakes okay so first of all understand meaning of the preposition the preposition itself has its meaning pre means before agodar and position means place ma kasha cha agodar they are they come before nouns or pronouns and they complete the meaning of the sentence they join the nouns to the remaining part of the sentence vakya madle nouns ait te vakya cha itar bhagala jodna cha kaam prepositions karat astat means for example one sentence i will say that he is playing the garden my sentence is he is playing the garden so if i read this sentence or you listen this sentence that time you people will find that something is missing so what is missing that preposition is missing and that's why we people are not getting the clear meaning of the sentence he is playing the garden actually it should be he is playing in the garden and that's why when i use preposition in that time we get the complete meaning of the sentence or another example i will give the book is the table if i say the book is the table then we will come to know that there something is missing and it does not complete the meaning of the sentence and now if i say the book is on the table that time we will come to know your preposition on it was missing and now it makes complete meaning okay so let's begin a preposition is a word used to relate a noun or pronoun to some other word in sentence so preposition is a word which is used to relate jodnya sathi sambandh darshane sathi kasha cha noun cha kya pronoun cha to with what to some other word in sentence vakyatla itar bhagashi sambandh jodnya sathi preposition cha vapar kela jato so here one example is given and that example is david is at the top of his career so at is preposition which relates or joins the top that is the noun to the remaining part of the sentence to the predication of the sentence and that's why at is preposition which completes the meaning of this sentence without using at david is the top of his career will it make a sense no not at all that's why for making it complete sense we people have to use at david is at the top of his career second you should be home by midnight so your preposition is by so by joins the midnight to the remaining part of the sentence so that is also preposition and based on their meaning and their context prepositions are also classified into the following types as we have studied other parts of speech and their types so prepositions also they have types so some prepositions they refer to the time and that's why we people have prepositions of time some prepositions they refer to place or position and that's why another type we people have it is preposition of place or we can call it position also then some prepositions they are used to show direction and that's why the third type it is preposition of direction and apart from that there are some prepositions which can be used for various purposes and that's why we people will additionally see some prepositions and their uses also okay so i hope that you understood that what preposition means and their types now let's see the use of these preposition of time position direction in detail with various examples okay so first of all we people are going to talk about the preposition of time so first use that is a preposition at so at is used with a definite point of time so where we can use at we can use it to show exact or definite point of time with festivals also okay here one example is given that i will reach there at 6 pm so 6 pm 
it is definite point of time and that's why at shows time okay so we people can also see another example our college begins at 8 o'clock in the morning so at 8 o'clock it shows exact point of time so at refers exact point of time then second preposition that is in which shows time which refers to time and that is used with day months years and future tense also so how we people can use with days we people can have parts of days like in the morning in the afternoon in the evening in the midnight so here one example is told that rohit plays in the afternoon so after in there is part of day that is afternoon so afternoon that is referring to the time also we people can use it with uh, months and years also in months we people can say in january in february in march hmm? so in december hmm? so example we can say the christmas comes in the december so in december that shows the month or in years also we people can use in 1920 in 2000 in 2015 in 2020 likewise okay then next preposition that is on preposition on is used uh, in context of time with dates and years so if you are going to refer to date particular date then you people have to use on or if you are going to refer day that will be also with preposition on so inu was born on 13th october so on refers here to date or you people can have uh, days also we can say on monday on sunday on tuesday wednesday thursday friday likewise our meeting is held on monday so on monday that shows time okay so that was uh, use of preposition of time see more use of uh, preposition of time let's see following slide here another preposition that is by by refers to the latest time at which an action will be over ekadi kriya he kadi sampnar ahe te sangnyasathi by cha vapar kela jato for example the movie will be over by 9 pm so 9 pm that is actually time here at the movie is going to be close or end so it shows when the action will be over then uh, next number five preposition for it is used for uh, to show duration of time and it is used with uh, perfect continuous tenses maybe present perfect continuous past perfect continuous you people have to remember here that here you people should not be confused between for since and from they can be used in a similar way but they are different so for shows duration or period since shows beginning of that action and from shows that beginning and closing of that action so first of all we are talking about for so it is used with perfect continuous tenses so here i have been living in my house for 20 years so here for preposition it shows period how much how long for 20 years and that's why your tense i have been living that is present perfect continuous and for shows period of that action then next number six that is since since is used with the point of time when action begins and continues ekadi kriya kadi suru jale ani tema pasun suru ahe for referring to that we people use since so example we haven't met since five years kadi pasun five years pasun so that shows that when action began and continues so 5 years pasun ami bhet lelo nahi hai 
then uh, next number 7 that is from from refers to the starting point of action ekadi kriya kadi shuru hote te from ni darshavli jata and usually comes with to from to eda pasun it paryanta 